Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 are ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's finding it. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. On sale this week. Jensen, the Interceptor. It's just the shape of the car and the feel of it. When you put your foot down, you know you've got the power there. It's fantastic. 1976, wooden picket, Triumph Dolomite Sprint. It's the only one that they ever did. Yeah, extremely nice. 2,000 miles from New Toledo. It still has the plastic on the door cards. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Wallace and Stevens Advanced Motor Roller. War Department. Mind your foot. It won't take prisoners, this thing, I tell you. There's no sort of middle ground with it, is there? You either want a road roller or you don't want a road roller. It's an early start for Dave. He's heading out to collect one of the most glamorous British grand tourers of the 60s. A sophisticated symbol of status with a proudly assertive name, the Jensen Interceptor. Yeah, sounds really cool. Yeah, they're, uh, should be Ultra cool, in fact. It's very sexy name. Definitely a male, a male car. What sort of male might be driving a Jensen Interceptor in the 70s? Somebody with a really small... In some old outhouses in West Yorkshire, an interceptor Mark I. Just over a 1,000 made, fewer than half survive. Jensen Interceptor, 1969. It's an old long book, isn't it? Look at that. No former keeper since May 77 on there. Pretty, aren't they? I had one for a while, blue one and uh, ran it one summer, got a real good offer on it at the time, which was only about eight years ago, and sold it, and then since then they've quadrupled in price. <laughs> but such is life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, such is life. But no, they're a real bonny looking thing, I like them. Yeah, they're a bit futuristic, aren't they? They're a, they're a bit, you know, big back window and all that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, more of a grand tour than anything else. Just a bonny thing and four seats, you get the family in, can't you? You get the kids in the back. So uh, it makes them quite a usable car. Whereas most things, most sporty bits are two-seaters, aren't they? So you're fairly restricted in what you, can, what you can do with them, really. We used to go out, my dad's Aston Martin. Feet on the mats, don't touch the windows. We sat there as good as gold in the back, yeah. Yeah. This interceptor might be beautiful. OK. But unfortunately, it's not running. We've got an issue, apparently, with... Uh, with a spark, sparking on one bank and not the other, which uh, we'll have a look at and see if we can sort that out. It, it shouldn't be a major job, and, and it will make a big difference. You know, people like to hear them run. You can stand here till, you, you know, till the cows come home and tell people, you know, you, you heard it run yesterday and it runs lovely, but no one believes an estate agent and no one believes a car dealer. Conceived and assembled in Staffordshire in 1966, 
The Mark I Interceptor was designed and largely built in Italy, but powered by America with a 6.2-litre V8 Chrysler engine. Genius! In 71, Jensen had a rethink, and they naturally thought, more power. The flagship SP for six-pack had an engine with three twin-barrel carburettors, a dashboard that looked like a flight deck, and an eight-track that really was made by Learjet. The Mark III was last of the line. Double the price of an E-Type, it did 11 miles to the gallon during a petrol crisis, and the Interceptor's decade of power ran out of fuel. A car of its time, maybe, but one that will always turn heads. Jensen Interceptor, Mark I. Got an original eight-track in it, which is interesting. It's, um, it needed some expenditure and some improvements, but generally speaking, it's got the makings of a nice car, but they all have. They've just recently come into their own, I think, following Aston Martin. They're on the, they're on the back of DB6s, that's basically what they're doing, and quite rightly so, because they've been a poor relation for too long. Handmade, of course, like an Aston Martin. They were the competitor to Aston Martin, but they never got going, and it's such a shame, really, but I just think they were maybe just a little outrageous for the buyer of that time, I think. A bit Americanised, lumbering old machine. We didn't realise what we got then. We do now. And, of course, consequently now, we all love them, don't we? You know, you could buy one of these, very, very nice one of these, for five, five and a half thousand quid, 10, 15 years ago. Very nice one. They're now creeping onto the 25s and 30s. And I've heard 40s, a nice one, a genuine one could do 40. Still plenty of affordable ones, though, that like, like this. I mean, this is like 15 to 20,000 quid of a, a Jensen, uh, and it means you can run one, drive one, while you're improving on it. I've always done it that way. Over in the showroom, Sarah is cataloguing a potentially exciting delivery of vintage posters. Look at that. Lucas Lamps. Who do we know has got a fetish for Lucas Lamps? Mr Matthewson himself. He's obsessed. Yeah. He's going to love that. I bet you he bids on it. There, it's probably dated, them two. I would have thought. They'll be like his exes, won't they? News of a rare, good quality interceptor at Matthewson's has got the well established Jensen Owners Club interested. Long standing member Chris Cawthron is preparing for a visit, and if the price is right, who knows? This particular car is a, a 1972. I never thought for one minute that I'd ever own one. When they first came out in '66, the, the cost of a semi house was probably two and a half thousand, three thousand. The Interceptor, when it first came out, was three and a half thousand. Eric Markham had one, uh, one of the very first ones. Uh, Dusty Springfield, she had one. Uh, and Cliff Richard, he had one. Yeah. So you had to be somebody to own one? Oh, definitely, yeah. Somebody with money. The shape of the car and the feel of it, when you put your foot down, you know you've got the power there. Fantastic. Effortless. A true gentleman's express. Well equipped. Electric windows, air conditioning, power steering. Seven hides of leather in the interior. Even the headlining is leather. That's why they were so expensive. Matthew Sons. Ah, yeah, speaking. Bat, 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 bat. Um, well, we'll, we'll no doubt give it a try. Oh, good. Oh. Oh, God. I think he's rang one of those um, really expensive phone lines. He's making yeah. all the right uh -huh. noises. Oh. Mm. 
Is it like an yeah. 08, 9, 8 or something like that that you mean? Yeah, I think he might be talking to somebody about a Mercedes. Oh yeah, that'll tell him on more. <laughs> I understand he likes road rollers as well. Just like a nice road roller. Is that a euphemism? No, it's a genuine oh, road a... roller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Derek is in luck. Apparently, there's one arriving soon. But his admin skills have failed him again. I do seem to remember talking to someone about a road roller many, 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 many months ago. And we don't know anything about it. We don't know what it's worth. Who, where, when. Don't know who's got it. Don't know when we're going to sell it, how we're going to sell it. Anyway, apparently there's a roll roller coming. You've got to wing things in life, haven't you? Hey. It's a 1941 Type B lightweight roller. They made seven uh, Type Bs, lightweights, and it's one of them. Sean Hamilton is custodian of this lumbering slab of heavy metal, owned by his mate Mark. And lightweight doesn't really seem to do it justice. When it's empty of water in its present state, around the four and a half to, uh, to five tonne mark. Made by Wallace and Stevens, with a double E, the roller saw action during and after the war. It was initially designed to uh, flatten for runways, uh, initially grass runways, we, we think. The War Department commandeered many vehicles uh, that had been used in, in World War II that could be used in construction and, 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 and rebuilding after the war. Um, this particular vehicle would have been used for repairing roads, flattening uh, pavements areas, uh, possibly, we think, in Hull, uh, obliterated during the Second World War. The last time it's been used, we think, was 1978-79. With a busy garage business to run, it's time for the lightweight to roll on. We haven't got time to repair it and put it back into a working condition. It's history, isn't it? We didn't want it to uh, just stay parked up and, and not do anything. We have no idea what it's worth. The Mark I Jensen Interceptor from 1969 is now posing in the showroom, one of only 300 that remains on UK roads and Ross-style wheels. Chris Cawthron from the Jensen Owners Club is given the guided tour by Paul. There it is, look, Chris, there oh, you go. wow. Yeah. Nice colour. It is a nice colour, isn't it, yeah. Chrome works good as well. Lots of repair on the seat there, look. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> a couple of splits there on the leather. Yeah. Looks very original. Yeah. Just needs a bit of love. Like, yeah. Like they all do. Value? Done up and in pristine condition. You'd be looking at 60, 70,000. Yeah, yeah. As it's standing now, probably 25, 30. Yeah. Mm. Uh, as well as the Mark III he turned up in, yeah. Chris also owns a Mark II. This car yeah. would make a full house. This would have been the model that uh, Eric Markham had, the Mark I. Same dashboard, same layout, everything. And is it bringing you sunshine? Oh, yes. <laughs> it certainly is, yeah. Wow. Tempted. He's not the only one. With hundreds of prime classics on offer, auction day can have a strange effect. Last time I come, I come to buy a table and went back with an MGB. Stacks of car-related memorabilia, also available for spur-of-the-moment bidding. Well, I bought myself these two lovely cans. I think I paid £50 for the pair of them and um, £120 for the danger sign. I think they were quite a bargain. I've been after a gas well for some time. Just what I was looking for. And on to the Jensen, the Interceptor. 1969, all right, we know it wants a few cosmetics and such like, but what a lot of car. Come on, where? In your hands entirely, start where you like. 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 13,000, 14, 14,000, 14,000 pound. 14,000 is the 15, 14,000 only. Are you all done at 14? I'll submit it. He won't be happy, but I'll submit it. Provisionally only 14, 14. It's a disappointing outcome. Ten grand below reserve. The Interceptor's reputation for being ahead of the market continues. 
No interest, was there? No interest, no. I think it's probably um, still regarded as a poor relation. It's a bridesmaid, never the bride. Most interceptors are not very good, so they don't help themselves that way either, you know, because most people expect them to be pretty poor. Whereas most E-types you see, different sort of kettle of fish, isn't it, really? They are pretty nice, you know, really. So, um, um, so I think that's got a bearing on their values and what they're doing and where they're going. So whilst they might not be their finest hour, it's, uh, it's got a good chance of going for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could argue that they haven't yet seen their finest hour. I think that's what it boils down to. The interceptor will go back to its barn to wait for the right time and right buyer. But all is not lost. Derek has a Jensen-related backup plan. Nothing like the muscle, but more tempting for the budget conscious. A 1974 Jensen Healy. They present tremendous value for money, in my opinion. And I think they're a lovely little stylish little car. I think they're a great little thing. Jensen already made the bodies for Austin Healey. Lotus offered their twin cam engine, and with a bit of Vauxhall in the mix, the all-new Jensen Healey hit the road. All that engineering points to a fabulous handling car, with a few rust and oil leak features, but priced between the Triumph TR6 and the Jaguar E-Type, aimed at the US market. It sold well. More than 10,000 were made, 70% sold to the US. It kept Jensen going until management turmoil, strikes and ultimately sales relegated the West Bromwich car makers forever. Like a lot of small manufacturers, they probably didn't have the resources to research and development and advertise them and promote them properly and things like that. So they were difficult to sell. Different now altogether. Now, yeah, I mean, we've moved on so much now. You know, all these years, people, um, you know, have, have, been, have been knocking stuff like that, and now, of course, everyone wants one now. They're a different thing altogether. They're just unusual, different, and um, I think very swish, very desirable, in my opinion. I think that'll do extremely well. Christine Ormston has fond memories of these cars. It was my first job after school. I went to work for Jen Scott, which was the company in Edinburgh who made, who sold Jensen's. And it was a very exciting, glamorous job at first. The Interceptor was maybe for the older men slightly, and then this, this Healy came, so this was the sports model for younger guys. So yeah, it was good to see. Do you think we'll be putting a bit in? <laughs> I don't think my husband will let me. <laughs> Jensen Healy, super thing. Brilliant looking car, 1974 she is. Rare bit of kit. Whereabouts with that? Where? Five, 5,000, five, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, five, five thousand, five hundred, going then five, six, five, seven, at the very back, five, seven, five thousand, eight, five thousand, eight hundred, five, nine, right at the very back, five, nine, five thousand, nine hundred, six hundred, six thousand, six thousand here, six, one, right at the very back, six, one. 6,001, 2, 6,002, 63, at the very back, 6,003, 4, 6,004, 65, 6,005 by the picture, 6,005 and going, 6,005, are you sure you're all done, 65, your car sir, thank you, 441. The new owner, Graham Smith from Glasgow, a Healy man through and through. I've got a couple of Austin Healey Sprites, and the Jensen Healey was the last of the big ones. It was a good condition, one or two wee blemishes, but apart from that, it, it was good. So we'll just complete the collection now, that's all. Everything, everything just seems in really first-class condition. You know, they lifted the carpets and a, a little look at the mat, and the floor's quite solid. It's just in generally good bodywork condition, I thought. Quite happy with it all in. The four-ton road roller is approaching Thornton and Dale. Derek forgot to log any details about it, so things are still a bit hazy in the office. How much are we expecting this road roller to achieve? Sorry, you're asking me. I don't work here. Yeah, I mean, as Derek had an indication of what it's worth, this fabulous road roller. 
Well, yeah. we'll soon find out because it'll be here uh, shortly. Maybe, yeah, today? Yeah. Is it coming today? Yeah. In 1941, Wallace and Stevens, the manufacturers, claimed that this beast would elevate rolling from merely ordinary to first class. I bet your town doesn't start. Yeah. Normally, Derek would decide to be busy when something like this arrives. But today, he fancied a workout. Mind your foot. It won't take prisoners, this thing, I tell you. The road roller does not represent good business for Matthewson's. High effort combined with a negligible chance of a sale. Need more people. There's no sort of middle ground with it, is there? You either want a road roller or you don't want a road roller. It's well, not there like... isn't any middle ground when it's road roller. There isn't, is there? Just flat. You haven't made any difference, these two lads. Oh, look at that. Easy now. We are right there. <laughs> there she is. Safe to say, I can assure you, people won't be queuing up for it. That'll do us. But it's a novelty, and we like novelties. Uh, and it causes interest. You imagine that people's going to ask about this in the next three or four weeks. Just hundreds of people. What's he got to do, like 400 quid or something like that? Right. Whatever you can. OK. Whatever you can. Renovation costs would be high for any specialist restorers, but it could still earn its keep. Tarmacking. Have you seen the potholes around here? I could make a mint. Paul's returning to base after a collection from Lancashire. There's a right way and a wrong way to strap them. I mean, look how many people strap them just one way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been the cab. <laughs> his chatty passenger is Danny Vernon, a regular customer keen to escort his precious cargo across the Pennines. We've got so much of a car, it's got silly. Well, you can have too many, can't you? Yeah, I have. Well, hopefully, I won't have. No, no. <laughs> In the next couple of sales. It's fair to say Danny enjoys his auction days. He gets fed. And when I come near me, I have about three bacon butties. I like my food. Yeah, yeah. And it's good. Yeah. Piece of cake. See, yeah. Tactics they're busy. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's a first. <laughs> We're here, mate. We're here. We're here. Paul's not used to bringing in hen's teeth, but on the low loader today, there are two of them. A pair of 1970s triumphs. We've got two extremely nice, 2,000 miles from New Toledo. How many miles on this one, Danny? Uh, I think there's 83 on this. It's a wooden about picket 83. sprint. A wooden picket sprint. Rare car. In nice condition, aren't they? I have restored cars, and I do own restored cars, but in my opinion, they never drive like an original standard car. The Triumph Toledo, it still has the plastic on the door cards. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah. And when I say it's totally original, it really is totally original. It's never had any paint. And the seats, carpets, look, just lovely. Just great. Yeah, brilliant. Find another one. It's still got its factory tyres on it, um, and we've cherished it and enjoyed it. The lady who purchased it brand new saw it in Bambers, which it was supplied from. She was out with her mum shopping, said I should have that car. And that was to take her mum to Tesco's once a week. Unfortunately, six months later, her mum died. And that car got put away in the garage along with others, and she wouldn't take it out. And it even had a sheepskin jacket over the engine bay to keep it warm in the winter. Uh, cars like that, they're not out there every day. They're really not. It's a wooden picket sprint, it's one of one. It's got a full leather interior, it's got central locking, electric sunroof, electric windows, quick release boot. It's the only one that they ever did. Yeah. As Danny prepares to hand over his prides and joys... Go for it, mate, yeah, yeah. ..there's one short journey left. There's no way he's letting anyone else get them off the truck. Yeah, yeah. 
It was restored in 1991 by a guy well known in Dolomite spin circles, and it's showing some signs of age in places, but it is what it is. It's not been made to look better than it is. Since I purchased that, I've done 20 miles in it. Yeah, you're okay, mate. It's a lot wider at the front than the back, isn't it? You're off, mate, you're off. It's auction day. Hundreds of visitors drawn to Thornton and Dale to eye up the shiny classics and the wartime road roller. Derek's estimate is balanced against its scrap metal value. It's not going to achieve a great deal of money. The fact of the matter is, it'll weigh into 400 quid. So someone will always give a little bit more than that. Elsewhere, random bits of memorabilia finding new homes. Got it? Three petrol pump globes. They don't come up for sale very often. And if you put a light inside, they look really good. And do you mind me asking how much you've then paid for three globes today? All together, 1,350. It's an expensive lamp. Well, yeah. have got a Lanchester 1934 LA10, and I absolutely love it, so I do collect a 1930s memorabilia. And this one went for 300 pounds. Wallace and Stevens Advanced Motor Roller, War Department, so it would have obviously worked on uh, on runways and such like. What's it worth? I've got four, four, four fifty, five hundred, five hundred, five hundred pound and going. Fifty, five fifty, five hundred and fifty I've got, five hundred and fifty and going and away. Five hundred and fifty, are you all done? Five hundred and fifty, we'll submit. Six hundred, six hundred on here, six hundred I've got. He's bought himself a roller, he always wanted a roller, or a Bentley, I think he's maybe getting confused. £600, it's going. Last time looking round, £600, are you sure? £600. Andy Rosethorn from Durham, the lucky winner. He has form. A previous renovation of a cricket pitch roller. Another one of the fleet. The plan is with this one, it's, uh, my dad's 72 and he's got nothing to do for the winter. So I thought I'd buy him another one to keep him away from my mum. Be all right, I'm over the moon with it. We'll take it back, we'll love it and cuddle it and repair it and get it back running, I don't think. But first, he needs to get it home. With a bit of luck, I'm going to try and pull the wagon down here somewhere and try and crane it on if I can. Don't know about this. Helping with the heavy lifting today, Andy's mate, David Johnston. Definitely risky, because it could have dropped on a vehicle or anything. It's one of them things, when you're working in a confined space, anything can happen. Once it starts to swing, it'll just keep swinging, so you've got to carry a little bit at a time. Way to do it, eh? As far as we hit, hit, hit anything, so that's good news. For new owner Andy, a successful day at the office. It was all right, it's a bit heavy, but it's right out, but it's not so bad when you get it close in. I was just trying not to crush the roof, but things happen, we'll, we'll repair it, you know. David was involved in the previous renovation, but this one is a more enticing prospect. This is like a, a proper road roller. Oh, yes. You don't make them like this now. The two rare triumphs are now safely in the showroom, waiting for new admirers. You smell that? Oh, I wish you could bottle that. Someone will be able to make that, won't they? Some chemist will be able to make that. Oh, it's fantastic, man. First to come under scrutiny, the very low mileage Toledo from 1974. A little tag there, look. 
It's obviously a works tag. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you know, if the car smells new, then there's only one reason it smells new, because it is new. So keep the window shut up, and so you keep the smell in there. It's like a new car, isn't it, really? 2,323 mile Toledo. Well, that's sort of very near factory fresh, but I don't want to keep on harping about the, 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 the paint imperfections, but you've got to because you, you can't call it um, as it left the factory. There's virtually no paint on that top edge of that door. More paint on here. So <laughs> basically when they painted it, they missed that really. That, that's caught the overspray, which tells me that we weren't much good at it. All in all, the market is narrow for this rare runabout. There's very little you can do with a car. You can't use it because you can't put any miles on it. You can't do the paintwork that you would like to do because then it's not original. So you're actually sort of pretty stuck, really. And I can't imagine there's a great deal you can do with it, but do exactly what this owner's done and probably the owner before that is, is put it in the corner and look at it. I can't really see a great deal of point, personally. But someone will. And there's plenty of guys come along with that, that sort of um, uh, mindset, fortunately, and as a consequence, it'll do really well. Probably 8,000 quid, something on that sort of line. And that one there, it's a wooden picket, Dolomite Sprint. They made fancy body refinements and upgrades and such like, and made um, certain vehicles very individual. Minis were the most, one of the most favorite, I suppose, wooden picket. Skillful old lads, they've done a lot of work and spent a lot of money. I mean, this conversion would have cost a fortune. And I didn't realize they'd done a Dolomite Sprint, but apparently they did, this is it. I'm told it's the only one. Unique, uh, as far as the vendor's concerned. The colour's right, and the, the, the add-ons of you know, things like the roof and such, like the leather trim, fancy wheels. This here, I think, is awful. They had to put something on the outside of the car to say, this is wooden picket. And, and I think they just cocked up seriously there, really. I mean, I think it's awful. Sorry, wooden picket, but that's a fact of life. Um, but I'm sure they've done a fantastic job. Uh, well, they did, obviously, and they've done some real mods, didn't they? Like this one here with a leather trim and all the rest of it, fancy steering wheel, early form of central locking on it, because um, they got this big thing on here, whatever this is, I'm not over sure. Um, which all these sort of fancy refinements are now very standard on all our cars, but in them days, of course, they weren't. Hey, rear seat belts, look, inertia real rear seat belts, never heard of them, did we? You know, um, and most of us never had front seat belts, let alone rear ones. Nice wheels, uh, made a nice job of the vinyl roof. I like vinyl roofs somehow. I don't know what it is about vinyl roofs. If we had a car that didn't sell, second week it didn't sell, you got a coach line. The third week maybe you got a set of wheel trims and if it really didn't sell and you were right stuck with it, you put a vinyl roof on it and that generally, that generally sold it then. <laughs> it's the last resource was a vinyl roof because they were quite expensive. Funny old days, weren't they? Peter Sellers had one, uh, a Mini apparently wouldn't pick it. He was enamoured with his Mini, apparently, and he left instructions to the hotel people where he kept it. I don't want anyone anywhere near that vehicle, and that. he was very protective of it. He loved it. When you pulled up in a wooden picket Mini or a wooden picket Dolomite, you were somebody. He must be somebody who's got a wooden picket. Um, and you've never had one? Never had one. But I've never been somebody, so it doesn't matter to me. But, so that's it. That's all I know about it. Uh, I think it's very saleable, and I think it would be even more saleable if it hadn't got that. We'll see you on the day. It's auction day. Hundreds of desirable machines from all eras going under the hammer. 12,500. Submit 12,500. Endless late inquiries in the office. Absolutely. We've got a two turn green with the red interior, but we've got a blue and white one as well. And a stream of punters claiming their newly acquired prizes. Lot 117, an illuminated BP sign. Correct. But there is an occasional consolation. One regular visitor brings special gifts. The hidden in the drawer. He brought David a packet of yum yums. That was to share for all the lads. And specifically said the yum and the cream cakes are for us. Yeah. He's a bit of a feeder, yeah. Obscure memorabilia. <laughs> Snapped up. I bought these books from our Morris Minor to read and maybe 
work and fix it. I've got a Morris Meyer, but I can't drive it. Only my dad can drive it. But it's your car? Yeah. I like that because I think he's a prat. Hey, because you're a prat. Yeah, I'm a prat. But you're a lovely prat. But today, it's all about the triumphs. From 1976, the only Dolomite sprint in the world to get the wooden picket coach builder treatment. And the 74 Toledo, stored for posterity with little over delivery mileage on the clock. Interior looks absolutely immaculate. Nice bit of kit. You won't find many with 2,000 miles on, obviously, will you? A bit small for me now. More into V8. <laughs> We looked at it because we saw the polythene still on the door cards. If you went to buy one of these, you'd be, you would not find one or many in this condition. It'd be interesting to see what it goes for, because if there's somebody who really wants it, could go for silly money. 1976, wooden picket, Triumph Dolomite Sprint. What a machine, very, very rare. Can't get much rarer if it's one or one, can it? Big chance, big opportunity, never come again. Start me with about seven, six, six thousand, six two fifty, six five, six thousand five hundred, six seven fifty, seven, seven two fifty, seven two fifty, and away and going. Seven two fifty, are you all done? Seven five, seven thousand five, seven fifty, seven thousand seven hundred and fifty, going, sold on away. Seven seven fifty eight, eight thousand, eight thousand. He says eight two fifty, unique motor apparently. Eight five, eight seven fifty, nine, nine thousand pound and going away. Nine two fifty. 95, 9005 out in green, 9750 back in, 9750, 10, 10250, 10 1 if you helps you, 10 1, 10,001, 10,002, 10 3, 10,003, 4, 10 5, 10,005, 6, 10 6, 7, 10 8, 10 9, 11,000, 11 1, 11 2, 11 3, I sympathise, it's difficult to value, 11 4, 11 5. 11, 6, 11, 7 this side, 11, 8, 11, 9, 12,000 pounds, 12,001, 12, 1, 12,002, 12,300, probably your only opportunity, you know that, 12,003 on selling, thanks for your bidding, on the left, are you sure? Well done, sir, just a job, thank you. Nearly 5,000 over reserve, supply and demand, and when it's the only one of its kind, and two people want it, the price is only going one way. The Dolly's new owner, Ian Mackay, came a long way today with one intention. I think I've travelled 500 miles from the Orkney Islands. I've always seen a thing about these Dolomite sprints I had once years ago when I was younger. It's when I saw the car and saw the, the job that had been made of it, that's what convinced me to buy it. Because it has been done by a professional coach building company, it's not just been done in a back garage, you know. So I bid until the other guy stopped. I have three sprints of sort of differing conditions for terrible to pretty good, but this will be the top one in the collection and probably the last, I would imagine, if anybody at home has anything to do with it. <laughs> with the Dolomite sold, a second bite at the cherry for a man who knows a good car. It's a 1974 Triumph Toledo with 2,000 some odd miles on it. Surely the most genuine example anywhere, absolutely right. You've only got to open the door, look inside and smell it. You know it's right. I want five to start, five I've got straight in, five, two, five, four, five, six. 5,600, where do you find them? 5,008, 58, 6,000, seated, 6,000 pounds, 62, 6,002 standing, 62, going on its way, 6,200, are you all done? 6,004, 6, 6,600 and sell it, 6,600, are you all done? 6,600, gonna sell it, 68, 6,008, 7, 7,000 standing. Last time looking round, are you sure you're all done? 7,000, well done. Victory at last for classic car dealer, Carl Reeves. In other news, having scored a duck with the first Jensen Interceptor, Derek had a second chance with this 7.2 litre Mark III. In need of some care and attention in all departments, the low reserve was a sensible 10 grand, and it was one of the last cars to go under the hammer on a cold November afternoon. I'll take 100 if it helps you, 12,750. I'll take 12,850. 
12, 7.50 and going then. 12, 7.50 and selling. 12, 7.50, Angela's phone. 12, 7.50, thank you. Not everything sells first time. It's the market that determines the price. Reserve is obviously very important, um, but, but the most important thing is the right car and the right buyer. And we've proved it time and time and time again. You get the right model and you get two or three guys that are particularly interested in a car of that type and model and you're home and dry. You know, everyone's a winner. After successfully transporting his four-ton road roller back to County Durham, it's safe to say new owner Andy Rosethorn has been busy. We freed off the parking brake. We freed off all the brakes because they were all seized on. We freed all the pedals off. They're all good to go. Loads of penetrating oil and loads of like gentle heat because it's all cast, so you can't you can't have lots of heat because it'll crack the castings. So they all freed off. The radiator had a mouse's nest in the top. Uh, that's been washed out this morning, so it's to go back on. The steering was all seized up, so we took all that out. We freed all this off. That's all free, good to go. All the water pipes was missing, so we're going to get some new water pipes. The two-cylinder injection pump was all seized up and corroded. We found it had a hole in. We did a little bit of temporary repair. We put it all back together and we've got it running. It's kind of done its bit for the Queen and Country. It's just nice to fetch it back to life after 40 years of being stood in somebody's yard. Andy is well placed to eventually get this wartime workhorse back to near original condition. Our business is plant here, it's just a family run business. So this is just, just, just what we do. There's a lot of work, but like, it's your own work. We, we sometimes buy other people's casualties and we end up fixing everybody else's um, machines. So we, we do that all the time for people. So this is the one that we do for ourselves. So this is our own little project. We have another two machines next door, which, which we've done, which we bought as casualties. It's a personal satisfaction to bring something in that doesn't run, to go out, done, run. It, it's basically my dad's project. Um, my dad just messes on. But like we all hate to lend a hand to get, it, to get it up and run for him, you know? And then we'll buy him something else. Maybe he's an A-type jug or something.